Okay, everybody ready to go? Let's do it. Okay. Maybe. Did you what? now ready to go? What, what are we? What doing? happened? Who? Huh? 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 <laughs> what? what? <laughs> We're professionals. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna start it. Uh, this is. I keep saying. Ah. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, take not two. allowed to edit that out. Okay, take two. Yes. Uh, this is February 4th, 2021. I am professional podcaster Justin Newton, a.k.a. Commander JN Trax, and this is the Loose Screws podcast. Why do I sound surprised? I don't know. Because um, I. <laughs> this is Loose Screws? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> Are these screws loose? No, this is nothing, right? Okay, anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, tonight, as per mostly usual, I am joined by several commanders. In this case, Commander Chig. How are you doing tonight? I am doing fine and dandy. How are you? I am okay. Uh, I also hear Commander Dubs. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, sorry, I can't decide if the joke about how long you talked is in the episode or if I've edited it out. So <laughs> anyway, very good job talking, Dubs. Uh, also, I can here say more is, words. <laughs> uh, Commander Lieutenant Commander Data, how are you? Why use lot words when few words do trick? <laughs> exactly. Hello. Hello. Exactly. <laughs> and so C- Commander NL Hate. Hello, sir. Fair evening. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, either the roughest or the best opening to the show ever. Not sure yet. Um, probably somewhere in the middle. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, got. Yeah. I have to have done worse than that, right? Before, probably. Just uh, based on I've, the numbers alone. Pretty sure on a regular basis, but but we're good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, how, how's uh, what 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 you been doing this past week, Chig? Uh, well, considering how much hell I get every time I go on Discord, uh, I've been playing a lot of CQC. <laughs> Do you get That's hell when you go on Discord? Yeah, I, I catch for I catch what? shit for for playing too much CQC. Well, mainly yep. from Teflon because he gives me shit for everything, oh. but but definitely. I, I catch a little bit of crap because it seems like that's all I do in game. Well, hold on. <laughs> You're really close to almost elite. I'm I am not even you. close to I'm not even halfway. Wow. He says you're close to close to elite. I think oh, halfway close to is close considered to, close. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, when you get to legend, you're at basically the halfway mark. It, it, it's actually going to be less than that because... You get kills a lot faster, and you win a lot more matches once you get to that point. But as far as just sheer number of points, right, right. that's like the halfway point is when you get to legend. And I'm seventy six percent of the way through heroes, so I'm getting close to getting legend status. So, mm-hmm. but but getting there because yeah, you need about twenty thousand kills roughly. It really depends on how many matches you've won and everything. And I'm at almost nine thousand kills, so wow. almost halfway. Uh, but well, remember, we talked about Musketeer just a couple weeks ago, hitting two hundred thousand kills. Yeah, uh, on Musketeer, he's already got another sixty five hundred kills on that <laughs> account, and I think his uh, one alt, uh, Doctor Evil Pork Chop, is already. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that that's his alt. I don't know if that's public knowledge, but his alt named that. I don't know. The guy's everywhere. Ha- has another like 5,000 kills. So since he got 200,000 kills a f- couple of weeks ago, he's gotten more kills in CQC than I've gotten the last year. So yeah, there's that. Good Lord. Yeah. It's, it's that's actually one way really looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> really uh, sad. If memory serves correctly, wasn't it about almost exactly a year ago that you started trying to get CQC elite? Uh, no, I hopped in CQC on a Saturday just to see what it was like because I heard you could never get a match. So that's when I started CQC for the first time with no intention to try for a week because I had heard it was impossible. And now that I'm at this point, 
not impossible. It's just oh. the hardest grind <laughs> ever. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So it's taken me about a year, almost, yeah, almost to the day probably to get a thousand, a little over a thousand wins in CQC matches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're not like hating every minute or something. No, I mean, I, you're playing I love a game it. and having fun. Yeah, so. I, I, I love the shit yeah. out of it. I, if, if, Don't I, so if I didn't like it, I wouldn't be doing it. I've, I've heard you well, come into Discord angry about CQC. You don't enjoy that shit. Yeah, I've, I've come in, I've come, in a, <laughs> come into Discord pissed off at fucking Musketeer, motherfucker. I, I mean, nice guy. <laughs> no, good feller, that my, Musketeer. My good friend, Musketeer. Comrade, come over here and join me for a drink. Uh, uh, I, I would love to sit down and have a talk with him about uh, yeah. what uh, what drives him to play it that much. Well, I don't know what gives him that much time to play it good god but i don't know yeah so i've been doing that and then i got a new monitor this week i, I went to an ultra wide 34 inch monitor for my center monitor i've never had an ultra wide before holy crap do i love it i should have done this a gazillion years ago yeah <laughs> you guys have got me on, on the train it's it's in my amazon cart <laughs> the trigger before this episode's Wait, which over one? which one is it on uh, I don't want to talk about it, Doves. I think I might go I, for I, the cheaper one because I truly oh, don't on, care. No. And here's the here's actually the 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 thing that's sealing the deal though is is actually that the um, the quote unquote better one, the 144 hertz one, is not available on Prime. Uh, and yeah. I'm I'm sorry. Like I know like the you know Bezos and everything, but like. We live in a world where Amazon Prime exists, and if your product is not on Amazon Prime, I'm probably not buying it. Like, I just don't want to deal with, yeah, but if something goes wrong with it, will the company actually return it, or will they make me pay for shipping and all this other crap? Like, if all that can be erased with with that little P being next to the product, um, that's kind of it. And I truly don't care about the difference between 100 and 144, because I don't look at the screen that much like i play mostly in vr personally and this screen the ultra wide is for the pixel space you know i'm going to be floating that monitor inside my vr headset for 90 percent of my game time anyway so anyway but i i didn't mean to it that sounds like i'm ragging on something like i think people who play on monitors like get a good monitor i am sitting looking at a TV that I think I've had for like 15 years and it was like a really good TV at the time but compared to today's panels it's it's pure garbage and I've just been dealing with it cuz I and don't I, look at it all that much but you know I mean, but I need more than than 1080p pixels to fit all the apps that I do like when I when I'm streaming and stuff Yeah definitely that that's a big thing but I mean even Ty was chiming in when you were discussing it today you guys get mm-hmm. these long discussions when I'm at work. So I like have to check Discord <laughs> on my phone to see what's going on. It's like, do I have time to respond to this? No, that's going to be a lot of typing. So I, I kind of let it go. But because uh, it, it is, it is a, you know, interesting discussion, you know, because of what the human eye can actually see. You know, there's, there's debate yeah. about things, but different people see things at different hurts and everything else. But there have been actual, you know, um, you know, tests that show that there is a performance increase, you know, in competitive gamers at the higher, you know, hertz. Yeah. But none of us are competitive gamers. We <laughs> play this for fun. And honestly, as long as it looks good, like I mentioned before, when I am playing on a, a 60 hertz monitor or playing a game at 60 hertz and then go up, I don't notice it that much. But if I'm playing at the higher hertz for a while, then I go down, all of a sudden it does... Uh. It, it bugs me. Uh-huh. So I, I, I think if you don't, you know, you don't really notice as it gets better, but then if you go back, you do. When it falls if back that off. Makes sense. Yeah. I, I, my, my feeling, and I, I don't know how, I guess I don't really know how justified this is, but I feel like the, the bigger difference is going to be the pixel time, like the, the refresh time per pixel. Um, as far as like ghosting is concerned, because, um, it, and it, because partially, I don't think you can really see the difference between like 100 and 144 or 240 or something like that. But I think like some of these panels have a response time that almost doesn't justify the the frames per second that they're boasting. And I wonder if like, sure, they can like 
they can register that many frames per second to the computer, but are they really displaying all that across the whole screen or is it all just turning into kind of a blurry mess, but it's all going so fast that you can't tell the difference? Um, I don't know, man. It's all know. magic I don't to know. me. I'm getting, I'm getting way too far into it and I, I, I don't know... I don't have any data to back any of this this crap up. You know, You're thinking I, about this I remember way too much. <laughs> I remember looking at a like a CRT monitor a while back <laughs> that was rated seventy five hertz because they were actually higher than than a lot of the other panels. And and then when we were all switching to flat panels, we actually we didn't realize it most of us, but we all took a hit as far as um, uh, frames per second that the ref- monitor could refresh at. Um, so I had this CRT that was pretty good and it refreshed at 75 and so like i remember playing like counter strike on it and compared to the 60 on my you know 20 inch L- L- uh, lcd panel yeah it would have been lcd and uh it was like oh wow i can instantly tell the difference at 75 versus 60 but like I, I don't know. I still don't think I'm going to care that much. And and anyway, like I said, whatever. <laughs> give my, I give myself over to the Amazon. That's really what's going on here. At the end of the day, it's it's once it's in your house, and as long as it looks good, as long as something isn't like fundamentally flawed, you're going yeah. to like it. It's like when you're at the store, you never go TV <laughs> shopping, and you're looking at you know the giant wall of TVs at Best Buy, and you're trying to decide, well, this picture looks a little bit better than that picture, and you're kind of walking down yeah. and, and deciding between, you know, I don't know, let's go back a number of years, <laughs> and you're going between a 42 and a 46-inch TV or something. Compared to today, the 60, 65, 70 inches, but in the store, you don't even realize how big it is until you get it home because in the store right. there's so much room and then the picture itself you're you know right in, putting it side by side with another huge tv you're gonna see maybe yeah. this one's a little bit better but then once you get it home both of them are gonna be as beautiful so just, just pick what you want yeah, absolutely the, the reason the worst you want. piece of junk the worst piece of junk i could ever get is going to be so much better than this tv that i'm using right now it's going to be like night and day yeah unless it shows yeah, up yeah. with dead pixels or you know sure and something. that's why i have to have prime <laughs> yes there you go there you go yeah. well I mean, it also on depends on the, the the whoever makes the monitor if it's a reputable brand then you don't really have to worry about prime because you know someone like dell or hp they're going to you know honor their warranty Whereas some of those no-name brands, then I would be worried about it. Yeah, but it's that extra yeah, I, step I, you'd have to go through. That's right. The pain I, too. I don't want to use a manufacturer warranty because RMAs are garbage to work with, and a lot of times they're still making you pay shipping and stuff. Like, what if something goes out after thirty days? Or I, I don't know. It, I, I just don't. I don't really want to deal with that. And and whatever these, I'm not looking at any screens that don't have Samsung panels in them anyway. So I pretty much know what I'm getting. Um. So, right on. Um, anyway, that that turned into, <laughs> into a longer discussion than it was supposed <laughs> to. Um, let's. Uh, we we actually have quite a bit on the show today, um, or we could. I don't know how how it'll go. Who knows? Um, Dubs, <laughs> what have you been doing this week? <laughs> I have just been exploring, basically the entire time. Yeah, and some mining, a little bit of mining thrown in there, but yeah, mostly exploring. But and you're staying I pretty just on schedule another, with the thing, right? I'm staying exactly on schedule. The carrier follows the EDSM schedule to the T, and then I launch off from the carrier, fill up the Tritium Depot, and then take off exploring for like what the three or four days between jump schedules. Mm-hmm. I That's actually cool. uh, got a little lazy today, and I did not fill the Tritium Depot, so I'm about to play catch up before I jump out. I'm not a fan of catch up. <laughs> I don't use it on anything. I'm not I'm a fan of ketchup with you. either. Yeah, no, don't like ketchup. All right. Well, <laughs> the next thing I want to do is hunt down Chig and fight him because he doesn't like ketchup. Fight for the honor of ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, Somebody's got to defend ketchup's much. honor. Well, that's we're talking about having a fight in Colonia. Is Colonia after Evelyn's uh, yeah, on the waypoint? <sighs> See, I'm already it here. Is, Colonia, it is, but but I and I'm going actually, to go to Evelyn's, and then I was planning on going back to the bubble, maybe. But I haven't decided. Oh, it is after. I mean, we can go it, to Colonia it, first. It's not that far. It it is. It, it's right next to it. Um, and I don't. It, 
<laughs> the the fight the fight in Colonia. I guess it depends when Lark Shadow is going to get there. Um, cause I'll be there. I'll be certainly be there ahead. I, I, I'm way ahead of schedule and I'll be just milling around Colonia looking for fun things to do. So as soon as, uh, Lark Shadow, I think he's, I think he's mostly sticking with a carrier. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, well, he's on the boat right now. He's on. Okay. So he's, he's on the boat. Um, yeah. which is Dub's carrier for the listeners who might not know that. Um, it's, there's this, um, we have this gentleman's bet, I guess. We're we're gonna have a fight, Lark Shadow and I, with our exploration ships, uh, and we will televise it. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's gonna be fun. And I kind of imagine that we won't be the only ones getting into it, because once you once you do a little bit of uh, scheduled, uh, commentated, live streamed PvP, everybody wants a piece. So that's kind of what I'm predicting will happen. Um, I don't know. I, I don't want that to be on the same day as our arrival at Evelyn's Light for, I think, pretty obvious reasons. Um, so if we're way ahead, we'll probably do it then. Otherwise, we'll we'll wait um, till uh, till after when it's a, a, a an appropriate time. But yeah, I know Dubs and I are going to do some meme ship fighting. We're trying to think yeah, of just yeah. some stupid builds to blow each other up with. Maybe we'll find a station think, and just buy whatever they have there is all we can use. Mm. Do something like that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that would be good, right? Like, So, okay, so look at what the outfitting is and then just create two builds on the spot. Yep, yep. No engineering. <laughs> I would love this. Whatever is there, you know, we can choose whatever a- ship we want, whatever weapons we want. It just has to be at that station only. With a price cap, too. <laughs> A price Ooh, cap. A price what? cap. Yeah, make it more. Interesting. I don't know. I think you're. I think you're overestimating the uh, outfitting possibilities yeah. at these Colonia <laughs> stations. There's, there's I only mean, a few that even have alliance ships at them. Really? I mean, there's Everything? only a few stations out there, and they've got to be pretty well stocked because you know it's not like people have options. The stations that are there probably have pretty heavy traffic or what but they what are. But I'm saying, like, pick a station, right? And if it's not a high tech station, there might be very limited options for what's there. That's true. It could be. Okay. I don't know. We'll see that. what happens. We we'll we'll play it by ear. We'll, we'll make figure it out. We got a, we got a few weeks yet to work out some Sounds details. Sounds like we can how we'll we can make an evening other. out of all this. Yeah. Yes. I'll yeah. Start looking up stations on Inara. Oh Christ! He's gonna have Coriolis <laughs> builds Jesus. from each station ready. It's <laughs> ready to go. He's gonna. Nah, I'm gonna keep it interesting. I'm gonna build it on the fly without Coriolis. Every ship <laughs> okay. and every module is available in the Colonia bubble. And I want to say every kind of engineering is also available, even some that aren't available in the regular bubble. Well, that's true. I know cell banks can only be mm-hmm. taken to their maximum in Colonia. And life support. I think. Yeah. Life support. Is life support only? Yeah, only there, yeah. Five, I think. That's pinned. So anyway, um, well, Anyway, that that'll be great fun. We'll pick a date for that when we know when everybody's going to be, but it'll be sometime near the end of February. Um yes. Data, what have you been doing this week, man? I've been having a good time on Distant Screws too. Been taking a pretty relaxed approach to it, staying on schedule. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll sometimes I'll jump between the waypoints. I think I've ridden on the boat for a couple of them and spend a night or two exploring around the waypoints, mining some tritium for the boat. I got you 78 tons tonight, Dubs. Hell well, yeah, thank you. Oh, high roller. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done a little bit of uh, planetary prospecting, just driving around in the SRV, finding some geo sites, or just driving around randomly trying to find that sweet, sweet selenium. Oh, nice. Tell us about that landing you had earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I discovered the fun of geysers at these <laughs> geological sites. <laughs> how how high? Oh. So I, when I arrived in Discord tonight to start the podcast, uh, you were about to launch yourself into the sky. How high did you get? Yeah, the first first jump, I made it to about seven kilometers, and I made a perfect landing, like no damage at all. You land on the tires. Wow. Then when you, when you came in, I think I got up to eight kilometers, and I was just pooning around up in the air, spinning around. I think that killed my momentum up, so I didn't make it into orbit. And I think 
I had that landing lined up pretty well, but I I instantly exploded as soon as I touched the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it was like no no death animation whatsoever. Like I've seen so many things blow up and they start to burn a little bit and they turn and they list to the left and then the, the fire starts and then bam, and it's very dramatic. And this one was just rebuy. <laughs> or I guess not, yeah. not rebuy, but like whatever it shows you when you pop an SRV. I'm Break just realizing forward. right now, I don't know if I've ever actually, no, wait, I've, I've had an after SRV shot down by like, um, by, uh, uh, surface station security before. Never mind. Okay. Forget I said anything. But yeah, it's really, it's really peaceful. Like when you're floating around up there so high and even when you're really close to the ground, it still seems like you're falling slowly, but you're not you followed a pretty good speed. <laughs> like 200 meters per second is what the speedometer was registering. It was fun. <laughs> very nice, very nice. What was the gravity on that planet? Uh, four hundredths of a G, 0.04. Okay, so not not that small, all told, considering <laughs> some of the stuff we land on. Very 0.04 fun, very is fun. Almost light as it gets. He said four tenths, so it's almost half a G. Oh, oh, four hundredths. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, that's very <clears throat> that's very small. Four hundred. Holy crap! Four hundred G. New <laughs> new record. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is fun. <laughs> Math is hard. <laughs> we need to go drive around on that. Uh, what was that? Eleven G world that was found, or twelve, or some shit. Eleven. Yeah, eleven. You first. Where Where is that? Is that out near Colonia? I think it is a little bit near Colonia. I'm not sure how far okay. away. It's not I'm gonna, near the bubble. I'm going to go conduct a very graceful landing in my Type 7 on that planet. <laughs> very graceful. And by that, cratering. I mean I'm going to just fly straight at it, deploy a landing gear, and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. All right. Um, last but not least, uh, NL Hate, how have you been this week, sir? Man, man, I've been golden. Man. I'm golden every week. I've been playing a bunch of Dead by Daylight. Okay. A bunch of Dead by Daylight. Uh, I don't have anything bad to say about it apart from like the wait times for trying to play with friends because there's a plethora of survivors and, and a very slim picking of killers. So if you're playing as a survivor, you got to wait a while. Uh, mm. But in Elite, I'm in a system currently with seven terraformable, world, terraformable worlds, and I'm pretty su- excited oh. about that. Apparently, my English cut is out quitting. For you. <laughs> you can still do the words good. <laughs> words If you bad. do try hard. I think I've only found one one Earth-like world so far. I'm not having a ton of luck finding them, but still having fun. Mm -hmm. So much water for me. So much Mm -hmm. water. Not a lot of Earth-like. She's about to go out and revisit my ringed Earth-like while I'm out in this area. That you discovered last year? Yeah, yeah, I discovered it out here when we did like a, a little mini... I wouldn't even say it was an expedition. There was like three or four of us that just took off out to this nebula. <clears throat> uh-huh. So I'm going to poke around out here for a day or two. Maybe find another one. Did you name it? Uh, no. What the hell's wrong with you? It's just it's just a bookmark that says first range Earth-like world. I have one. Chig does not. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. <laughs> wow, all that fits in a bookmark title, huh? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Only the first like four words of that were the actual bookmark title. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? Let's see if I can fit all of that <laughs> bookmark title. Man. Well, um in show news, obviously discon dis oh my god, the words good is does happen. Um distance two does continue um it's it's late it's one of those it's one of those nights um distance screws continues um we're moving on i'm actually i've got one waypoint between myself and evelyn's light um 
And the only other significant news in my life is that uh, my daughter lost her first tooth today. Oh, right. And she was pretty pumped. She said, uh, with regards to the tooth fairy, she said, I don't think the tooth fairy is real. I've never seen a fairy. So, Mom, when you come in tonight, please be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, we don't, we don't tell them, th we don't tell her things are real, but I usually respond with kind of like a, what do you think situation? And, um, she and stopped she, asking. My daughter <laughs> she lost kind of her first, stuff out. <laughs> my daughter lost her first tooth, said something like that to me. Then I popped her in the mouth and she lost her second tooth. <laughs> 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 and I said, now you get twice the money. <laughs> <laughs> I have an update on the length of the bookmark names. Do tell. It did fit most of that. The book the bookmark's <laughs> name is now first ringed ELW, parentheses, I have one, Chig does not. And I was able to fit four ha 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 ha's in. <laughs> <laughs> but no closed parentheses. <laughs> oh, it's closed. I closed the parentheses. Okay, great. Oh, phew. Uh, now I got to go find an Earth like world, damn it. With, With a, a ring. A ringed Earth like it. world. Oh, God. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> Sounds like work. Um, Can I find yeah. those in CQC? No. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Actually, yeah, yeah, you can. You know what? Keep looking, Chig. Okay. Fly oh, oh, eventually. Oh, oh. You got to oh, fly oh. far enough away from the station to break mass lock. Then you can. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm being tricked. I'm going to try it, though. Um, okay. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, next thing on my list is going to be the squadron update. What do you think of that? Hit the sounder. Uh, you, okay. <laughs> I, I usually... Um, I start talking because I'm trying to vamp for myself while I get things ready. So anyway... Wait. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. The rain in Spain falls. I mean, no, that's fun. Yeah. Did it play twice? I didn't, I didn't hear it, it at all. It at all. Yeah, yeah. You're just fucking Wait, with us. You didn't hear it? No. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> really? This is <sighs> a great show. Oh my god. Okay, whatever. It's all over. Go, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's it in later. All right, hey, Apparently. what's the squadron been up to? Man, most of us have been out exploring. While we were out exploring, we were under attack, accidental attack, uh, mis misguided terrorism. Uh, but anyway, an angry Latvian in a horse mask <laughs> led hundreds or thousands of people into coma and really threw a wrench into that. I think I think that last week. Nurgle wasn't on the last episode. Trax talked about that last week. I think Nurgle talked yes. about it the week before. But everything appears to have <laughs> petered out uh, and is is more close to under control. Did, did they mark? finally start getting the Kung Mu missions and said, fuck this, we're at Aquama? Man, I hope so. <laughs> but, uh, so, we really want Kama to expand because... In its expansion bubble right now is a 7 billion population system that we want to be in. It already has an empty spot. It's real close to Kama. And unfortunately, none of our other systems can expand that far because it's directly north of Kama. Yeah. So we want to get Kama expanding and get out there and get that other system. And uh, so, commanders back in the bubble, work comma. Yes, or else. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> or else. We don't need any That's or else. We uh, in in other BGS news, I left some stuff in the show notes last week, meaning to be here, but I wasn't. Um, the Dark Wheel has expanded to their sole test site. So their next tell, tell expansion. Us, tell us what that actually means. What, so it's the next one that is the test then? Yes. They are okay. in a system 
and everything around them is full or permit locked, but it's far enough away from other permit locked areas that it can only expand into Seoul or fail its expansion. Okay, they've got it locked out. So it's going to happen or not? It this is, is the moment. either going to happen within the next 12 to 15 days or not. Uh, also, if you're in stations where the Dark Bill is present, look for a permit mission. They, they posted that. They, they want you to look for permit missions given to you by the Dark Wheel. I can't wait for this well, to break the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to black adder the whole server. <laughs> Everything. I suppose another possibility. You would hope for that. Jeez. I don't want it to happen, but... <laughs> It'd be cool if it did. <laughs> It'd yeah. be cool if it did. <laughs> <laughs> Not the expected really? result. No. It's that a record, guys. <laughs> but it's a result. Yeah, well, it that. would get the it would get the whole gaming community, even people had never heard elite, about elite, talking about elite. <laughs> and That's then for it's sure. Gone forever. <laughs> it would take care of. Hey the guys, whole, remember uh, that game, Elite thing. Dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, people are bitching <laughs> that consoles got delayed farther. Now the whole game's dead. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time a very large group of players deleted the game that they loved? <laughs> that was fun. Ah, uh, 2021. What a year. Yeah, it's all shits and giggles, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Fun. So uh, what's the timeline on that? Uh, they have to get in to control that system and then get their influence up to 75 to trigger the expanse, just like regular BGS stuff. All right, so all of that sounds good. There was no time included there. <laughs> uh, like as, a, as I had a said earlier, frame. Mr. Chig, between 12 and 15 days. 12 and probably 15 shorter, days to build it up. Probably shorter. Yeah, it doesn't take long when you've got the army that they exactly. have. Exactly. Sure. The whole the bucket dark is full. Army. Their, their cup overfloweth. <laughs> so we, we should have an answer to this question that they've been working on now for God, how many months has this uh, thing been going on months? Do you, do you want me to like actually find out and tell you? I was, well, I was okay, hoping he just knew uh, it's been less than five whole months. Okay. So five months they've been working on this and we'll finally have this question and then it's off to LFT 509. That is their next plan. Yeah. Okay. And that's what, that's the really interesting one. Cause that's where, people think uh, the dark wheels hidden bases, right? Yeah. All right. Yes. Um, the, let's see. What am I saying? Um, sorry, I got completely distracted by the, the gif that, <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. Teflon, when you listen to this, Way to go, man. Totally <laughs> derailed me. Uh, anyway, um, uh, yes, well, it, I was going to say it's not the first thing that they've sort of prodded and tested, right? Like, it's not like nothing's happened besides moving across the galaxy until now. There were some other things that were um, previous tests, I believe, at least on the list of stuff that they wanted to check. I I'm yes, not they have, the exact they details, have expanded but... into Lave, uh, and okay, the the Darkveil project started sometime in uh, May last year. So okay. it's been almost a year, ten months or so. Wow! Yeah, time goes by <laughs> and takes forever. It's just crazy. Well, la- last year was <laughs> you know that that year. <laughs> Man, I'm yeah, so time, glad time it's di- the, us. the year of time dilation. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, so let's see. There's been some happenings in Galnet. Um, so just to kind of go over quickly, this all this stuff is all in the show notes where you can read more details about them. But um, these are the sort of news articles that that haven't directly been. Um, events and stuff in game, but just like uh, stuff surrounding the story in game. So the the Galactic Summit, for which there was a CG, um, caused a delay in the Alliance election. 
Okay, don't know what that means exactly yet, but it's a hub. It's a whole hubbub, a hubbubaloo, hubbubaloo, if you will. Words still very good. You are uh, a wordsmith tonight. Yeah, I am. It's Ed, Ed Mahone is running for re-election. The first, isn't that the first time that an alliance president has tried to get re-elected? I thought I saw that in one of the prior. Yeah. Articles. Well, it sounds it seems like now he's trying to not get reelected. He's yeah. trying to delay the whole thing. So who knows? Yeah. Um, next up was uh, core dynamics being implemented in the Starship One sabotage. So this whole court case continues to go on. Um, this one caused a lot of chatter in Discord. People saying that they wanted to uh, dry dock their uh, Corvettes and stuff for a while, find something else to fly. Um, I didn't necessarily have the same reaction. I I was not under the impression that either the Federation or Core Dynamics uh, had clean hands going into this. Um, none of this particularly surprises me, and it doesn't make me want to not fly my death machine of a Corvette. <laughs> what do you guys use your Corvettes for that when uh, a company kills some people, you're like, oh, shoot, I don't want to touch that anymore. <laughs> oh, God, I've murdered so many people in my Corvette. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I just... <laughs> Um, but I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, know, I think uh, if I was role playing my character, my character would have been laughing out loud at people's desire to not have their federal ships for a little while. Pe- people upset Jeez, guys. that a maker of war machines is is dishonest. <laughs> I <know. laughs> Weird guys. This, I did the thing that they has... did to get the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This this spaceship has two size four hard points. What do you think it's for? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If I bought this ship, I may have bought on my hands. Well, oh you my do God. after you bought it for sure. I mean, like how how bad how, how bad could the foul play have been? They only paid the admirals off with billions of credits, so they just had to mine for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> they get that much money, right? So I, I, they I, paid them. Yeah. Oh God. I'm not, I'm not the other way. <laughs> Good okay, um, so here's where the in-game news, I think, gets pretty interesting. So um, there was the event last week that uh, involved a new mystery that that got solved rather quickly because I, I don't think it actually was a puzzle. It was just it was just a slightly hard to find thing, and that doesn't actually <laughs> count as a puzzle. Um, so it got found very quickly because there's just so many of us. Um, but the uh-huh. Uh, And I think we went kind of spoiler-free-ish thinking that we would circle back to it. So the event, as the event went down, these mysterious messages happened that that we relayed. And and when people found the site, it was this story told through several audio logs about uh, an imperial black site, like torture facility, where the group of NMLA terrorists who were apparently operating a bomb-making facility inside Federation space, were taken to this site and they were being tortured. They were called Theta Group. And this wild event took place where somehow a, a transport that was carrying, supposedly carrying this torture equipment that they'd ordered specialized stuff because apparently these guys were really, really good and they needed the juicy, juicy torture... Uh, They bring the torture device, but instead uh, this transport arrives and either the the terrorists themselves or somebody related to them has high up imperial access codes and actually like disables all the security on that facility remotely. The place turns into a total mess. And then when the transport arrives, it turns out to actually have like stormtroopers on board that... Uh, kill everybody except the terrorists and then and then torture the leader of the facility and it's very creepy and very fun and once again as I said last week you should go in and listen to the audio logs because it's really cool but then pops up in the news a few days later the empire denies the existence of the black site and says that they think that the federation is framing them um, I don't know which side of this is more fun to imagine being true, um, but well, this has me all... Well, who now? Why, <laughs> obviously. Let's mothball those Imperial ships. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, what do we get to fly now? A Sidewinder? What, are, uh, what, are, what is your response? Lake is still there. 
Oh, oh, the I thought they got bought by another co- bought. I thought they got <laughs> bought by another bought. company. The words is good but, for you too, Chase. Yeah, yes. the words is good tonight. My my Lacon ships were built pre core dynamics. Thank you very much. Okay, so you're you're allowed to fly yours without boycotting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm flying a Delacy vessel right now, um, but I don't care. Uh, what, <laughs> what, what do we think? Uh, let's let's have a quick up up and down. Uh, Empire denying this site is it a is it a federal hoax or is the Empire guilty of doing what we all pretty pretty much presumed they would do anyway? I mean, they already endorsed slavery. I don't know why this is such a leap. I guess we know where my money is. The fact that you're accusing such a large government of even being capable of evil doing is just astounding. <laughs> How could you ever think that, that would, they would do that? Okay, Dub's a true patriot. What do you think, Chiggs? No, absolutely not. It's <laughs> pluralized my name? Yeah, yeah. Words are good tonight, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know, JNT Rax. I'm not sure what I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh god what did they say on um i'm sorry i'm sorry steven if you ever hear this um <laughs> what did he call me on stream i missed it G- i heard gin G- G- tricks Gen- <laughs> uh steven yeah. i love you man i i laughed so hard <laughs> i was like dude We've met, like, I mean, not in person, but like I've <laughs> spoken to the guy a few times and I know, I know what it's like to, he, they're, they're on stream and they're juggling like 700 things and he wasn't expecting uh, something like that, but that was so, so funny. Anyway, um, <laughs> I forgot what we were even talking about. <laughs> I don't know, uh, government <laughs> doing good deeds to help everybody. Else. <sighs> the, the empire, um. I don't. I don't know. I am I am I alone? I just don't feel like any either the Empire and the Federation are both bad guys. They've always they're, been both bad guys. The entire story is this a surprise to anybody? They're literally all evil, and I'm pretty sure yeah. the Alliance isn't very far behind them. <laughs> the only thing saving the Alliance is that they function much more bureaucratically, so that everything they do is slower, right? So when they want to do something evil, it just takes them forever to get moving on it. Yeah, uh, that's still like our. That. There's no rep until our, until our boy Eddie turns them into a dictatorship. Oh yeah, we'll see. Yeah, maybe yeah. this facility was built by Mahone. Maybe he built this place. Yeah. yeah his torture facility. <laughs> the reason he postponed the election is because he's got to go play uh, cover up. Yeah. He's like, oh damn, my my man, my man Bill was supposed to take care of this. Yeah. <laughs> now what I have to go do hell? it. I, I will say it was it was cool what they put together with the whole, you know, black ops site and the, the guys, you know, the people standing up to the torture and all mm-hmm. this great stuff, you know, it was, it was cool stuff, but now I, you know, I want to know they they still haven't found like the lab they stole these guys from or anything yet. Have they? That's still something that is not to my knowledge. Part of this the bomb just, facility is still being looked for. Okay. Okay. And that's where these guys probably went back to, but wait, yeah, they reference a the system in the logs, right? Yeah, but there's nothing there, so I, I don't know, man. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there there is a possibility that some of this is made up, but but with the Empire and the Federation pointing fingers at each other, did the Federation find these people and turn them in? And then they turn out to have ties high up in the Empire. Like, I, I'm, I'm joking about how, like, sort of silly this is that we're trusting anybody, but at the end of the day, like, it it is, like, kind of a... a clever bit of story that I, I I agree like super cool and what I mean some something is up when when these when these guys were captured they were turned over to the Empire by the Federation and that seemed to be cooperation and now they get access codes to open their prison cell doors remotely so Something crazy is going on, and I, I do, I am excited to figure out. At the same time, and I didn't know if anybody was going to say it, so I guess I'll say it. But like, I am super disappointed by this puzzle because I thought something else was something else must be coming. We must not have found it all, but I, I, I don't know if there are still many hangers on holding that opinion. But as I was kind of listening through the 
as the news and stuff started to fill up through this week, you know, it just every day goes by and there's still no additional part of it. So it really was just like a an Easter egg hunt and yeah, with one like egg a, and we found yeah, it. Yeah, one egg in a medium-sized house and you could bring as many people as you wanted to search for it. it yeah, which it was just... Yeah. Yeah, it was. That's no puzzle. Not, no, it's not a puzzle at all. It's, it's, it, it's not. I, you can't even say it's a time sink because it, it. There was a finite number of systems to search, and yeah. thousands of players searching them. So even if it was just a thousand players, that was five systems per player, and you could search everything. In this community, shit, they they have spreadsheets, man. They'll find it real fast. <laughs> The system that this site was located in was the second one on the spreadsheet search pattern. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Oh, my God. Um, So as as I'm thinking about it just now, it occurs to me that, like, this is a kind of a clever way to disseminate essentially a Galnet article. Um, you know what I mean? Like the stuff that I was sort of reading headlines of right before this part, um, it's sort of on that level for me. It's it's putting it in game, we find it, and then we receive the information. But it's not a puzzle. It doesn't count as a puzzle. I guess it's a mystery in that we don't really know all the ins and outs of who's behind it, but we're sort of just waiting for another Galnet to explain it to us. It's like, why, why, you know, what's up with this uh, election being delayed? Well, we'll just have to find out, you know, there's not, it's not like there's anything we can do. That's kind of the level that we're at. And that's fine. Um, Do I remember now, like, did they say it was going to be a puzzle? They said it was going to be harder to figure out. They said it was going to be harder to solve, didn't they? It really sounded like it was supposed to be some kind of puzzle that they were going to be putting yeah. together. And I, I don't know, me. what would be funny to me is everybody's talking about, oh, you made something so easy for this community. You guys are idiots, blah, blah, blah. And they could just be sitting back laughing and saying, you guys just haven't figured it out yet, you know? And and there is another step, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and. And watching the stream, though, like everybody was saying, like, I mean, that was the thing in the stream chat that was not mentioned on on Tuesday because everybody posts, you know, constant questions. And basically, whoever is on the stream has to just repeat every three and a half minutes. We don't have anything new on Odyssey. We don't have anything new on Odyssey. Sorry, there's no Twitch drops. We don't have anything new on Odyssey. Sorry, there's no Twitch drops. <laughs> and but like every third message was, have we found everything? Is there still something out there? Absolutely no mention of it whatsoever. Um, and huh. they announced that it was coming. I don't know. I, I I feel like there really isn't. I'm becoming convinced that there really isn't anything else. That was disappointing for me. I don't know. What do you think? Am I being hard? I think I need to play a game made by American developers so they do this shit at a time that I can watch these streams. Just <laughs> I hate that all this stuff was always when I'm at work. Like the whole searching for this thing, you know, I was way out in Colonia, so it's not like I could do anything, but yeah. I still just the time that it hit and it took like an hour to find this or hour, two hours. Four. Yes. Four. I, I, I don't, you know, like I said, math is hard, but either way I was at work. So I just, you know, I just read the, you know, popped into the forums to see what was going on and uh, shit, it was all spoiled and, known everywhere in, in a few hours and then now they're not saying anything and i you know like i said i don't watching a stream is one thing watching the recording of a stream when everybody's already talked about the stream is an entirely different animal there's just i just <laughs> never get around to watching them because i'm just that just i'd rather just hit my head against the wall or watch paint dry or play cqc you know three things that are very similar <laughs> the magic is gone <laughs> yes, yes. But instead, I'm I'm mining tritium. This is even <laughs> it's so good. It. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I, it's I need so audit. Good. Oh man, tritium is so great. Um, okay, actually, so we're not done with in-game news anyway. Uh, then today, uh, guess what? 
uh, a new CG has started. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and click the link through to this so I can see it. So um, the engineer, Liz Ryder, has requested Mind Materials to help make a previously unique ship module widely available. So um, this the, the way it's presented is that, you know, Liz Ryder, who was for a little while implicated in, in helping the terrorists and I guess may have un, unknowingly helped them make their bombs, um, but was uh, cleared of wrongdoing, is essentially trying to make some make some good noise in the in the world, uh, in the galaxy, I should say, not the, not that something puny like a world. Uh, so this is um, going to be we're going to be rewarded with uh, the high capacity low. Uh, mass, lightweight, low mass. I always feel weird saying lightweight because weight requires a celestial body to create a force against it based on the mass. But anyway, um, so, <laughs> you can't see, but I'm pushing the glasses up my nose so hard right now, you guys. Uh, anyway, the the low mass, high capacity uh, seeker missile launcher with, I think it comes with thermal cascade on it. But right. by the way, for anyone who isn't sure, you can change the experimental effect without getting rid of the double engineering, and that's great. Um, this is going to become a regular, well, not a regular module in the game, but it's going to become widely available in the game as a human tech broker unlock at the end of the CG. And so everyone is being asked to deliver... Some mind materials. Bromelite. Oh my God. Finally. <laughs> Bromelite, this is your moment. Yeah. Still not mining it. Bromelite, lithium hydroxide, osmium, and samarium can be delivered to the Awira Flurble Starport. Boy, that's a that's a real that's a great name. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so deliver them. Uh, the reward for participating is going to be a reduced cost to unlock for two weeks. And everyone who participates, well, that, that's going to be the reward for how many tiers you get. The, 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 each tier above tier one of progress in the CG will reduce the cost to unlock by a certain amount. And participants, the top 75% of participants will simply receive the module. Um, this is a module that uh, was part of a previous CG. I forget exactly which one right now, but um, I have the module. It's actually on my Exploration Cobra right now. It was um, the one we changed. talked about it earlier where she was cleared of wrongdoing. The Empire one. Yeah, I know. I, I, can't, I can't remember exactly what we were doing in the CG, but... No. Uh, I think we were just... Fighting? There's conflict zones. Yeah, conflict yeah. zones. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was it. Okay. It was a combat CG. Way to go. Um, oh, this is this must have been the one where we were either defending Liz Ryder or trying to let Ed, Ed, uh, good old Eddie take over her system, right? No. Denton uh, Petraeus. Was, no? Denton. Yeah. Denton? Yeah. Yeah, Denton Petraeus, you know, the oh, other yes, evil of guy. Course. The other, oh, God. He's more blood Sorry, hungry I, I than Teflon. So many evil people in this <laughs> Are you game. Sure? I just hear words, 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 words. <laughs> words, words, words. I, I, my question is now, were they planning on doing this all along, making that, that double engineered module available at the tech broker? Or was it because people bitched that I want to be able to get it too, and then they changed it? And if it was planned all along, now I would assume all of these double-engineered modules that have come along are going to have some CG that are going to make them human tech broker-ish eventually. It does seem that but way, right? What's, I, what's, what's the point in having a special module if everybody can have it? Well, not everybody can have it. You gotta, have you unlocked every human tech broker item? I've unlocked everyone that I want, and nothing's stopping me from unlocking the rest go. of them. Well, exactly. But it's not special but anymore. Just, just make all the, just make all the missiles light. I mean, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> just make all the missiles light. <laughs> <laughs> Taking away the fucking specialness of it. Episode title right there. Yeah, no, I has there <laughs> been right salt on the forums about this? By people have the missile rack and are all pissed off that they did the past CG and 
now. I honestly haven't looked. Anybody either. has anybody looked? <laughs> Why do I even oh. try? They're just gonna give it to me later. Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? But that's that's the kind of thing that people would bitch about, and I have I have no problem with it becoming available. I and I do like the fact that it will be available to everybody. Uh, you know, I have one already, but I don't know. I, I think anytime that there are things in the game that cannot be attained, achieved, acquired, code before. <coughs> yeah. Or, I know exactly. It's just it's one of those things that you kind of get annoyed with. It's, now, if there was if there was a player yeah. market where we could sell this amongst ourselves and it had value, then I'm uh, okay with cool. like that being in game. You know, if we could be, you know, s- buying stuff and they could put exclusive things like that in that then you know would just go up in value the longer the game is mm. in, is is a game. But there's no player market, so I think you have to make things available because yeah, like the the Cobra Mark. <clears throat> excuse me that the ship that's not available um to everybody that was what uh horizons pre-order or is that pre-order? yeah so yeah is it pre-order or just for us it's, it's pre-order it's, yeah okay. yeah and and you know that that's the only reason that there's not a bigger stink about that is most people think the ship's a piece of shit so you no know, i want it <laughs> i want it yeah but just because i want to have everything I want it because it's hard point placements way better than the Mark Threes. Yep. And it has an extra hard point. Yes. So I an mean, outstanding yeah. little AX ship is actually it actually would be pretty good. So Dubs thinks that it shouldn't become No, easier. no, I was just being Thanks. salty. I really you don't care. I, th- I think yeah. it's a good thing that more people are gonna have access to it because now I can put a bunch of fucking missile racks on my high speed little uh courier and just have like a super stupid fast ship with lots of missiles that doesn't get slowed down. What do you think, Trax? Um I'm surprised because I, I did kind of think that um because they haven't made the mark for you know like it's been it's been called for to you know please give me some way to unlock this and they did leave it special um i don't think this is nearly at that same level of specialness as as something that was part of like a pre-order you know um, yeah because that was real money that people had to spend yeah at a time yeah. in order to get that this is just you participated in an event that you know, took place, you know, for one week in game where you might have been on vacation. Well, not in this day and age, I guess, but <laughs> that, <laughs> buddy, buddy, God, God, we love you. Um, but, you know, there, there, you might have just not had an opportunity to do it. So now for it to be available, I, I like it. Yeah, I, I find myself a little surprised, but at the same time, um, I, I don't know. I guess the the thing that that comes to mind now is yeah, like are they all going to become available eventually, or are they not? It it still could go either way. I think I I don't think I can predict um, either way. This is well, I was about to say this is probably the the most enticing of the modules, but. No way! Like that FSD has to be the most yeah, the important FSD. one. The F- yeah, for sure the FSD. No, no competition there. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have no problem with it, for sure. I think it's nice they're uh, showing some love to the human tech broker. I don't remember the last time I had even thought about that contact in a station. I don't know when the last module was introduced to it. Come on now, cargo racks. I've never. I don't think I've ever used used the human tech broker. Now that I think of it, you didn't buy the cargo racks. You've nope. never made a meme ship out of shot cannons. Uh, nope. What are you What are you even doing when you play this game? <laughs> I just sit on the landing pad. <laughs> hold, hold on. The, the the flak launcher. The flak launcher is human tech broker. Oh no, that the flash jet launcher is human tech broker. I think the yeah, flak launcher is automatic. Launcher? Yeah, I accidentally the unlocked just the flip- to buy? Yeah, you just buy it. Because I remember, because I was like, oh shit, I need to do this to go to some AX combat. And I spent this time 
unlocking the flechette launcher. And <laughs> I tried to fight a fucking interceptor with a flechette launcher. And I was getting pretty fucking upset that my flechette launcher wasn't doing which goddamn job. Oh my but, god. Uh, yeah, I figured it out. And, uh, I, felt, I felt pretty stupid at the time. So anyone that's listening right now who hasn't done any AX combat, Flack ends with a K. That's the one you want. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I just looked it up. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Uh, uh, what about yeah. you, Kate, your opinion? I really want the point defense turret because I actually use those. I'm a big fan of the point defense turrets. So you're you're uh, you just want them all to become available like this one's going to be available. I would like the ability to engineer things twice at the same time. Oh my god. People, <laughs> people, I'm not saying all people. I, I think it's a vocal minority who hate engineering that say it ruins the game and power creep. But man, could you imagine if you could double engineer everything? They would lose their freaking minds. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, I, I, I am among the I think I would... who believe that engineering did to some extent fuck up some of the game's balance, but there are ways to counter it, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's a good thing. But it did complicate things a little more than it should have. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, the, main, the main thing it did, I think, is if you don't have engineering, you have no chance against somebody who does oh, have engineering. That's, absolutely that's no chance. That it was, and that's where a lot of people just don't want to put the work to counter that stuff, because to me, it seems like there's counters to everything. If there absolutely is. Everybody time. wanted the. I I think everybody wanted the engineering to have its own counters built in, and that's not what engineering turned out to be. Everybody wanted it to be like CQC, where changing your loadout is a Tetris game, it's or a, a tic tac toe game or whatever. However you want to think about it, like if you make a move, you are taking away something as much as you're giving it. And engineering, like even the mods that have negative aspects to them, they're typically far outweighed by the benefits and you have to counter them with a different style of attack not not the negatives of that same mod uh, modification rock, rock paper scissors that's the mm. that's what you're looking for yeah. It, yeah. yeah it it even it even further deepens the difference between a pvp and a pve ship are we going back to that conversation from last week no 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 <laughs> no that was last episode <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, I, I'm of the impression, yeah, double engineering would be neat, but I don't think it's something I like this kind of special, uh, modules that are double engineered makes things interesting and putting them in the human tech broker makes the human tech broker relevant again and interesting. And mm. they, and, and I'd like if they put thought into the combinations that they do and you know the ones that they've done so far there seems to be you know that some interesting interactions between the engineerings they put on them so i i don't know i i i, I like this development as much as i follow developments yeah i i don't think this particular module is overly powerful either so um, and i think that's the key you can't also have something that breaks the game you know yeah it just allows you to keep your jump range on smaller ships high while also doubling your missile capacity yeah, yeah if this and was likewise, like a pack count if this oh, was double God. engineered pack count it would be sickly broken i would love to have a set of double engineered pack hounds i like an over I don't know. an overcharged efficient long range beam with thermal vent that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> For double the thermal output. Yes. Okay. What okay. Okay. Um, I have to. <laughs> let's let's move on. There's some other uh, I think very interesting things to talk about um, this week, um, particularly. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll make mention of of this next thing. Um, so the anti botting. Uh, agreement or whatever we want to call it. Um, this is something that um, kind of everybody was talking about. Um, it's sort of like a, a, a public, I don't know what to call this. It's, it's like a public statement. Uh, yeah. Pledge. Great. That's, that's 
Perfect. A public like, Don't a do pledge drugs, that, kids. <laughs> well, okay. I, I, I have a super hard time imagining any aspect of this is controversial. Um, the only people who are going to have a problem with this um, are not ever going to talk about having a problem with it. Um, so this is the, here's the thing. Um, the pledge is about not a- anti botting. It's sort of this, uh, uh, falls under the heading of cheating, but basically like using scripts and bots and stuff like that to, um, typically I think this goes on, uh, with respect to power play a lot. Um, I, I don't know all about how it works. It seems like total madness that you would actually script elite to play. How, how do you get talk about shadow, to... shadow wings and ghost fleets and they don't define. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Um, I, I, maybe I don't know. Maybe there's probably a lot, there's this whole like underbelly of, of crap that goes on of people essentially cheating in the game. I mean, obviously using bots and stuff to do things that would affect, um, the BGS and or power play. Uh, is cheating and that's not what games are for and so obviously this is all bad stuff um i i sound really dismissive when i talk about this because i i feel like it's it's almost analogous to to saying we all think cheese is good right yeah everybody sign sign up to my letter that tells the world that cheese is good and we think so (laughs) Um, and I, I obviously like, intolerant. <laughs> even if you're lactose intolerant, you're you heartless. probably still think cheese is good. <laughs> like but if just I can't, you can't have it, it's it evil. Or, hey, that's you, not fair. Just cause, just cause it's you're uncomfortable. You, just because you and your loved ones are uncomfortable after you eat cheese doesn't mean you don't think it tastes good. Okay. Well, what, why are you bringing my loved ones into this? What's wrong with you? Well, because if you're, if one was <laughs> lactose intolerant, and they enjoyed cheese anyway, their loved ones would probably find that no. very uncomfortable don't, as well. Don't, don't assume his family loves him, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, that anyone is, near that you, elite. okay? Anyone anyone near you with a nose, this is the issue. Anyway, yeah, the, the point is of. actually not cheese, Chig. At this particular juncture, <laughs> the point is not cheese. And I, I don't know how no, I don't, to explain I know, that. I, yeah, I, <laughs> you don't need to belabor it because, honestly, I know what you mean. That's yeah. why I, I made that, like, Drugs are bad, kids, because to me, this is like, well, yeah, duh, botting is bad, of course. What what are we doing with this thing? It's just, uh, you know, bring some attention to the problem. But, I mean, this seems mm-hmm. to come up every six months or so, you know, a new anti-cheating right. thing and a complaint about it. And FDEV, what, why aren't you doing anything? And we don't know what they're doing, and that's right. their biggest problem. They sh- should be like other game companies and a note announce bans or shadow bans or what they're doing to combat the problem. All that they say is we're aware of it and we, we are doing things. Okay. Should well, publicly what? humiliate those that are caught and banned, tar <laughs> yeah. and feather them, send them out into the streets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, that, that I totally agree. That is exactly the, the main point obviously is to bring attention to it. And, um, w- it, it's hard because I assume they are doing something and it's actually been a while since a cheating f- conversation flare up has happened. Um, I don't know what to think, but, but it's hard to imagine why I, I can't think of a good reason why sharing it with the public wouldn't be good. Can anyone? Exactly. I, I it, with it not being shared, I, I could see how somebody could in their own brain take it. Well, the company doesn't say anything about it. They aren't banning players. I, it feels like they allow this, you know, there's so many things they already allow with all that third party things that we can use. And just writing macros to do power play, you know, to, so you don't have to click oh, a bunch of times, hey now. things like that. But no, you know, they allow certain things that technically would are against, you know, the EULA, but then, you know, where's that line? And they don't say where it is. You know, I, I they, they right. a little clarification would stop a lot of this. And I don't know, I mean, maybe hate, you know more about, uh, you know, how the groups who see this stuff happening, you know, how are they proving that it's happening? 
because I have the no demarcation idea. between Xbox and PlayStation and PC. It would be very, very difficult to it not to to say that it's not just Xbox players playing in a par- private group. Uh, but if if you I, were sorry, around, I, I don't quite understand what you're saying. Um, wh- he said, what about the- I think you're saying that it can't just be attributed to a xbox squadron doing this that they don't see it has to be a bot group well you, you can't say that it's 100 400 percent that whatever problem anybody is seeing is a bot you can find pre-made scripts if you dig around on the internet and set your account or your daughter's account or your alt account or a dozen uh epic accounts to do bgs mm. for you Okay, so maybe maybe the epic thing is is why this is flaring up right now, huh? Or, or just the people, people are lazy and using bots to uh, farm, you know, BGS. I feel like scripts and like not scripts, like macros. The way I use them, like I'm not using those to further a BGS purpose. Like I'm just too lazy to sit here and click my fucking buttons fifty times to get a power play module. So I just let my mouse do it for me. But I'm not letting the computer run for six hours at a time running BGS missions or whatever power play and screwing somebody over. No, well, exactly, you're not doing it on, a, on an alternate account either, which I, no. I think well, that I mean, makes a difference, right? Because it's like your, your player can, like if my commander is doing something for the BGS, then my commander is doing that. But if I have three commanders and they're running in oh, virtualized computer systems, and they're all running at the same time, then that's multiplying my force using a bot, right? And can or run 24-7 and yeah. everything else. The thing yeah. is, like, I feel like once once it gets to the point where you just walk away from your computer and it affects somebody else, that's when I would have a problem with it. If, if like, the way I use it to just fill up my mats on fucking Jameson's crash site or, like, the obelisks, I, I, like, me doing that, literally affects nobody else not in even the slightest manner and i think the the biggest problem people have with the bots is when guys are they have like a ship that's just programmed with a bot to automatically run back and forth between systems trading and increasing bgs influence without them having to actually do anything and then they can just leave it go for days on end and they can do it because mm-hmm. they can be in solo or private, and they've, they're at no fear of getting attacked or stopped. So that that PvP side of it is just you know you're just screwed. Yeah. Because and, and at that point, you are screwing somebody else over. Like you are using something the way it wasn't intended to be used, and basically negating out someone else's actual hard work that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. But I think yeah, I think some of those bots are a little more advanced. Than, yeah. Some of those bots are a little more advanced than just a simple macro. Like they probably have bots out there that can actually aim and direct your ship and take like action upon certain things happening. So an advanced yeah. super group assist module. Yep. <laughs> a trade assist module. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's going on. The um, the link to the forum thread is in the show notes, and uh, you can see all of the uh, game player organizations who are signatories to it. Um, I actually I haven't taken any steps to put loose screws on there, but obviously loose screws signs up to this. I, um, maybe I'll make that official at some point. Uh, or somebody will, but um, yeah, it's, uh, I say it, I, I don't mean it to be dismissive. I think this is obvious and should go without saying it's too bad. Somebody had to say it. Uh, so the next interest, this is the, 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 the more interesting one, perhaps, although I didn't expect that to turn into such a discussion. So I have no idea. This is why I say, it. I don't know where this show is going to go. <laughs> Um, uh, so this one, I hope some of you have gotten to see this ahead of time or it's going to blow your minds, but, uh, player slavery has (laughs) just come, (laughs) what? I said, oh no, (laughs) I call it slavery. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Okay. 
So um, this, I guess, uh, per- first popped up on... Well, I first heard this on uh, an, a video from Obsidian Ant, but I followed down to Original Source, and I think it turns up on the Hull Seals subreddit first, and then there's a, a cross post over at the forum where somebody copied it over. Um, so apparently, this has been going on. I don't think anybody knows for exactly how long, but the idea was that. Um, Some commanders who wanted to make some money, I guess, uh, took it upon themselves to trick and essentially enslave actual players of this game, particularly new players who didn't know enough about the game to know better. Um, But the method was to essentially befriend them and try to uh, act as though you are helping them make money and you provide them with some things that they need to get started, perhaps a cash infusion and a specific build of a ship that's going to allow them to do much better mining. And they help the the new player build this ship. And they said, you know what? I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to take you on my carrier. We're going to go out to this awesome mining spot. So then they they (laughs) get carried uh, hundreds of light years outside the bubble to a particularly good mining system where they're going to do mining and then the car- carrier is going to buy the things from the, the new player for a, you know, a good price and everything. Um, but when they get out there, they realize, or maybe they don't realize because they don't know where to look yet, that they've the ship build that they've been given maybe only has a two light year jump range. Um, <laughs> they cannot leave. And the car- the carrier owned by this nefarious player who has effectively enslaved them has uh, set their buy orders for way below galactic average and is just using them uh, for nearly free farming of valuable minerals. And they don't know enough about the game to escape this by essentially, like, suiciding back to the bubble. <laughs> Um, and they are stuck out there. And so eventually somebody who isn't one of these uh, nefarious players found out about this and is, uh, or they, they've begun organizing uh, rescues by moving good <laughs> uh, noble carriers out to uh, provide not only um, high value buy orders, uh, but also rides, you know, essentially prisoner transport back to the bubble, um, trying to kind of get out ahead of it. And uh, they actually, um, Stephen mentioned it on their stream today on Thursday that they, he said that um, the crew at FDev is aware of it and is looking into what can be done. Um, that's essentially the gist of the story. Uh, what are your thoughts? Just you know, the absolute scummiest thing that somebody could do in this entire <laughs> game. Like it's being ganked, nice. like that's yeah, like my feelings wouldn't even be hurt anymore about getting ganked. Like I, I did not think <laughs> that you as a human being could sink any lower. That is absolute trash. Like the amount and of your effort. account should be disbanded. Just like fucking effort and like uh, communication. Like you can't just roll up and kill somebody. You're talking to them and leading them along this whole path <laughs> yeah at least it's i a know it anchors in yeah. like hey he's trying to kill me he is the enemy like no that's I, these guys I, are yeah, taking it to a whole new level like god I think damn loose screws loose screws we should step up and be the first to put out an anti making other players slaves agreement that everybody <laughs> can come and sign <laughs> And <laughs> hey, I have an announcement. Hold up, hold on. I just found an undiscovered Earth like world. <laughs> oh, wow. Does About it have a ring? Shit. Sadly, it does not. Then I don't care. Do any of yours? <laughs> I, only, I only have to find one to catch up, so it's all good. All right. Okay. Um, Dubs, I noticed that you said you think that they're, did you say their accounts should be banned? I mean, that's just my personal preference, but that would obviously, obviously be the wrong answer. It is just the game, and they paid for it, too. So they, so they should, should be should killed. Be allowed to play. They should be allowed to play it how they want. However, they should be killed, but not, not in-game. I right? feel like their name should at least be put out there for that's other people to be aware of who to avoid, like a uh, blacklist almost. That That's against the rules. 
yeah shame so they've just been they've been uh, listing the systems i think where this is happening oh no i'm sorry that was carriers they're listing there that are helping yeah, list the carrier. you're allowed, yeah, list the carrier you're allowed to name and shame station. carriers <laughs> weird when, when carriers were first Trash. coming out i i was i was really excited for the emergent gameplay that would come about of being able to move <laughs> other people around and though it is a bad thing to make other players into slaves, <laughs> I'm excited that they were ingenuitive enough to do so. Such I, trash. I, I, I do applaud them. That that, that is uh, interesting use of game mechanics. Good job. No, no, it's a great <laughs> idea. I mean, good thinking, guys. You're just a fucking asshole. Who, who the fuck <laughs> needs bots when you can get noobs to do things for you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, oh, okay. <laughs> In this interesting, right? Because I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like I, I find myself thinking, like this is extremely clever, very, very evil, and <laughs> totally not against like the user agreement of the game. Right. Um, and now we're in this fun, fun, interesting place, right? Where um, we were talking earlier about like FDev does not announce when they clear out cheaters and and they don't say what they're doing or when they're doing it and it's all very hidden and I know some people are getting bans because it it you know it comes out when individuals get banned but that's sort of all we know about it and is is this sort of uh background radiation of like well something is happening but we don't really know what and that seems weird then we couple that with this policy of naming and shaming isn't okay um and I think that's the part that I actually have a problem with um, because I absolutely think that these people should, are and should be allowed to do this horrible thing that they did. <laughs> um, and I think as a community, as, a, as the players, this is what the solution should be. Like, I was surprised when... They said that they were looking into what they what when um, Stephen said that they were looking into what they could do about this, because I think the perfect solution is already happening. The players are fixing it. Uh, m- maybe a little bit of like I, I don't know. Maybe FDev could be on the side of sort of warning newer players about this sort of thing. But like, nah. I do think. Yeah, I mean, how would they do that though? Like, that doesn't make yeah. sense. And in any place they put it, new players wouldn't see it, most likely. <laughs> and honestly, a new player yeah. might, if, if they actually stick with the game, I think that it might, this would hurt the game. If you're going to dishearten a player, they're just going to be like, this game sucks, blah, blah, blah. Or they get out of this, they find out what happened, and they're going to have a hell of a story to be like, I can't believe I was made a slave in this game. It's wow. just fucked up. I, I, it kills me. It's a riot. It's how, how powerful a whole a, a, an ecosystem, a whole thing is this that this sort of thing can happen, and that players can realize and come rescue you, and and I of all things that have so made it, this galaxy kind of seem alive, this is like one of them because it's like that yes. really shitty. I mean, yes, getting ganked out there is something, but this is you were convinced you were grifted. I mean, it's just. Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. It, it it makes me so excited. It I felt so when I I just heard about this today, and I was so excited at like this is the latest thing. This is the latest amazing thing. This isn't you know one solo player doing some amazing thing in the game, killing a Hydra and a Sidewinder or something. It's it's what the whole player base and the fact that this is a sandbox can cause things like that to be possible. Just the number of new number of moving parts to make it happen is just messed yeah. up. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mean to laugh at anybody that this has happened to, but it, 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 it is mind blowing that this yeah. happened. It really is. Uh, I had a live universe. Now it would be awesome as if Dev, if F Dev could figure out a way to to train the AI to do this to players. <laughs> oh God! 
I, I think I'll agree that it's no, funny sorry. that it happened, but I still think these people are trash and should be publicly shamed for this kind oh, of behavior. I think they should. I think sure. should absolutely yes. The the fact that we're not allowed to name and shame players who are gankers or doing something like this, like this is that's a choice that a player is making, and we have as the other commanders in the game, we have any tool at our arsenal to communicate with each other, um, be that like ED recon and stuff like that, or just the forums or discords, you know, of course we should be able to communicate with each other and being able to say like that player did something nasty, that should, if we were allowed to do that, in in what way would that not be the solution to ganking? And it almost seems like the fact that we aren't allowed to do that is the reason that ganking is still searching for a solution, you know? Bring back Um, public executions. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, we wouldn't be able to execute them any more uh, n- then than we can now, except no, no, I'm, everyone I'm would be aware of it. And I just, oh, well. Yeah, pu- publicly <laughs> post their addresses and we just go to their homes, yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. What's the time on the tape here? Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> but that's where the discords come into it, though, because there, there's no rules about shaming on our own discords, you know, but we yeah. can be like, and I'm sure that's, that's how it got it's coordinated to rescue. Yeah, but I'm sure that's how it got coordinated to mm. rescue these people is, you know, somebody was probably bragging about what they were doing on their discord and maybe not a fully you know, regular person heard it and mentioned on, on a different discord. It's like, they're doing what? And then, you know, I just foresee that is kind of how this got worked out and ended up becoming public. And, you know, these people were kind of getting rescued as it sounds like, you know, I, now I'm I, maybe I'm not glamorizing about make it, may, maybe I'm making it more than it was, but there was almost like this underground because you can't go to the official forums and out these people. It had to be done through back channels. The Dead Horse Emporium. The who does what? what? <laughs> the Dead Horse Emporium. It's a Discord <laughs> channel where you, I really would expect to run into that kind of news. Mm-hmm. How many Discords are you on? Do you really want to know? Yeah, I, I'm curious let because me, we let me do a fresh count. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, we heard this earlier. You know, heard of some new Discords, and then there was a whole discussion with people about how many Discords is too many Discords and stuff, and uh, more well, than one is out. my answer, but. <laughs> I'm on definitely I, I more actually, than one. Yeah, I don't use more than one. Yeah, twenty. I, You've got more uh, than 20. twenty. I was expecting a bigger number than oh, that. Oh, jeez, I, was I might almost be in twenty. That. I've them in three huh. different folders. I mean, I got eleven. I'm halfway there. Oh, yeah, I've got, got I've got folders. fifteen, and I don't know how often Lightweight. I'm in any of them. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and I don't have them in any folders. I just got a long line of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're all okay. related. Um. Anyway, to to th- this episode is starting to get long-ish. Um. I am surprised by where Dubs fell on that, but I guess maybe I shouldn't be. <laughs> Dubs, uh, in favor Dub- of public oh, execution. Oh, I guess yeah. I shouldn't have been surprised about that. The uh, no, only pub- reason Dubs thinks these people are scum for making people slaves is they didn't dump them into a sun. They put them to work. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd have just summarily murdered these guys, he'd have been okay with it. So he just doesn't I, know what the word slaves means. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> like, okay, I never turns. enslaved those people. I freed them from their slavery. <laughs> freed them from their lives. <laughs> Another word he doesn't know what it means. No, Dubs didn't say public execution. He said public elocution. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. I need a... I need a... a, a, a uh, thesaurus. Yeah, you get your hearing, uh, word. hearing aids checked, guys. <laughs> <laughs> your hearing aids, you old birds. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, um, let's do chick chat, right? Sure. Right? Yeah. You do you. Okay. Yeah. What are we doing? Being uh, really quiet. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> it, apparently, my my stuff doesn't work anymore. I don't understand. Uh, There's a pill for that. <laughs> you need switch to be running. <laughs> no, I I had this all worked out. 
I don't understand why it's not showing it to you when I play a sound. Now, why isn't Ty here tonight? He would have just started singing. We know dubs won't. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I thought about it for a second. No, like, no they don't want to hear that. My voice by itself is already bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Can only imagine trying to sing cheek chat, right? Okay, apparently I, I broke my sounds at some point and I don't know why, so whatever. Um, you you might need to hire a professional sound engineer or something. I know. I, for I don't, I didn't think I changed anything, so I wasn't expecting to have to troubleshoot it. So, okay. Um, so, where are we? What, right. what, do you, what do you have for us? Something not elite related, I hear? Yeah, I'm just, it, 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 it'll be quick. Hopefully, to, hope to God it's quick. We are a bunch of long winded <laughs> fools tonight. Um, Last week, I asked about Schwarzenegger movies, everybody's favorite Schwarzenegger movie, and a lot of people respond to that. It's fun when it's it, there's a lot of response to the Chig Chat stuff. And uh, it was as I expected. Pretty much everybody named every Schwarzenegger movie that I could think of, and I realized that I know Schwarzenegger movies too well because I knew all of them, except there was one that Kai Zen brought up, but that was because it was from 2015, and I didn't know Schwarzenegger was still making movies after the 90s. So... <laughs> that was that was something where like he's the father of a of a, a zombie girl of a zombie yeah a little girl who's turning into a zombie and he's dealing with that. I just didn't think I could go watch that one. That just sounded too damn depressing to go watch. And then I imagined he was just going to shoot her in the head at some point. So I just I, I, I'll go watch. There was Maggie something. Do you remember the name of it, Data? Yeah, I think that was the name, Maggie. Maggie. Yeah. yeah, that 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 one, I, I'll, I'll watch at some point, but I got to really be in the mood to be depressed, I think, to go watch that one. Um, this week in the Discord, uh, Ty hopped in and just dropped just a, an interesting little bomb on the thing about consoles that I'm not going to get into that. But it led us into a whole topic about um, different games and games that people like and, and ways of playing and everything else. And then I started thinking, I'm like, man, there's games that people just talk about how much they love and they're the greatest game ever. And I'm just like, I didn't like it. It was boring and it was dumb. And for me, it was Red Dead Redemption. You know, it was like game of the year. It was Mm. the greatest game ever. And I played it for like, you know, an hour, hour, not maybe three hours I got into it. I kind of felt like it was even forcing myself to keep playing it because I was just getting more and more bored. I'm kind of running into the same issue with cyberpunk a little bit. I don't, I don't know why it's these kind of story games like this, not being in VR makes them hard to play. I'm just not engaged with them. Like I should be, I think like doom eternals the same way. Another, another, you can see too much of your real life. I think so. Yeah. I I realize, you know, I I can smell myself and everything and it's just not cool. I just, I, I, I like, Whoa. Yeah, that was over the line. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I, I these these first-person kind of games that I used to enjoy, I just don't enjoy anymore. But I'm just looking at games that you, you know, everybody says they just love, 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 and you've played it or you got it thinking you were going to love it, and then you just couldn't even get into it. And, and Elite Dangerous is one that, you know, I keep trying to get people to play and I have never added a new player to this game. I just, I, I tell people to play it and I warn them about the learning curve and stuff and they'll start playing it and then they just say, fuck it and they're done. So, but I don't know what, what games have you guys run into that you just thought you were going to love or everybody loves and you played and you just thought sucked. CSGO. <clears throat> oh, interesting. Really? So Did you play any other Counter Strike before that, though? <clears throat> no. And you you play a lot of first person shooters over the years, though, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you talk about. I mean, good God, you you you've played more more different games than any of us probably with the list of games you've gone I've through. Been played paid to play Halo, Gears of War, and Call of Duty at different times. Great, Scott. <laughs> And in CSGO, what was it about CSGO that you just couldn't draw you in? I, I think I joined too late, and the it handled all right, but the graphics were just not up to the standard I'd been used to being played at. 
Uh, so it'd be like uh, going back and playing Half Life Two right now. It would just be like, eh, this just isn't what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about you? you know, Dana? That's, that's funny because the CS:GO is like the third or fourth, you know, sort of remaster of that game. <laughs> Uh, and, and Half-Life 2, like, like Counter-Strike existed and then Counter-Strike Source happened and then there was like some kind of reduce to that and then CSGO happens after that. I think, I think it was either the third or the fourth where they update the graphics and sort of try to bring it more modern and add some things, but while retaining sort of the, the skeleton of the game underneath. Have you played that one, Trex? Have you played CSGO? I've never played it. Yeah, no, Counter-Strike was my first like competitive multiplayer game. Uh and I played oh, yeah. I played all the versions of Counter-Strike. Okay, I only um, played the first I, way back. I think like 1.6 yeah. when it, when it was um I think by the time CS:GO comes along, I I'm I'm actually surprised when I see nowadays that that's still like a popular competitive game today, like that's amazing to me because I agree. Like I think it's uh, it's super retro and it has no aim down sight and it has a bunch of. I mean, there are things about it that made it a, a effective as a competitive game. There's a gameness to it that you know avoiding the realism of more modern games, um, but it's it wouldn't hold my attention now for sure. I super agree. I actually expected some hate out of this this group about that too. <laughs> I've never played it. I've never played any CS. CS goes free, right? We could try it. Nah. When I <laughs> got it, well, well, you know, I got a Steam account. Like my Steam member number is super low because I got on board to Steam when it was extremely new because I was a Counter Strike one point six player. And then they made Steam sort of a little bit after that. And it started, that started to be the platform that everything was on. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, that's, that's, I don't know. It's, it's super old. I get why it was a competitive game for a long time, but it makes perfect sense to me that it, it, it isn't, doesn't hold people's attention anymore. And it, makes no sense to me that it's still being played with every with all the other options but i guess there's some staying power there i play so few other games i really have to think back like the last you know popular game that i didn't get into the one i can think of is a uh, back on the nintendo wii super mario galaxy is what comes to mind to me oh my god me too I- I couldn't finish it. I don't know why. I just didn't. I just bounced off of it after the first few hours. The Wii was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it the was. bowling. Jesus Christ. Sports. Yeah. Nice pack in game. And uh, what? Uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild? Or what was it? That was, was Twilight it? Princess. Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess That's the one. Yeah. Twilight wolf. Princess. Yes. Yes. That one. Another one came out on the Wii later, I think. But yeah, that was the popular one. Yeah, that game was good. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. It was it was tricky. It was old school video gamey. It wasn't like these new games that are just so complicated. Yeah, Bre- Breath of the Wild's good too. I haven't finished it yet, but I still play it occasionally. It's a lot different. Yeah, that's on the Switch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that newest one. Yes, I haven't. I never got a Switch. I, that's like the first Nintendo system I didn't own mm. was the Switch. I even I even have a Wii U downstairs. <laughs> They're selling like hotcakes, I guess. They're selling a lot of them. What about you, Dubs? Do you just like every game uh, you play? No, <laughs> not really. I was actually uh, convinced to try uh, WoW and uh, what's that Final Fantasy MMO? Uh, yeah. Both of them. I absolutely 14? did. I don't know. It's. I think it's one of the newer ones. I don't know. It's the MMO Final Fantasy game. That one and WoW both. Like trash absolute garbage i'm not even gonna think about revisiting them 
<laughs> yeah, I, I played WoW for a long time. I still don't know why. When I first started playing it, I'm like, eh, I see, my, I, I can see myself getting bored with this pretty quick. And then I put in almost nine thousand hours in that game. Jeez, oh, yeah. this, this Elite is the only massive multiplayer online game that I even have slight interest in. I don't know why. I just literally could not get into the other ones because we weren't playing with you. Probably, yeah, that's it. <laughs> but you're not going to convince me to try again. <laughs> yeah, but you're trying to convince nope. me to buy the forest so I can be murdered. And I mean, I didn't say I was playing the forest. My wife is playing the forest, and I'm considering joining her. Yeah. You are free to what? You free to join us? I'll run the server. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm Consider- not about it. Considering you think about this pretty hard, huh? Yeah. Once my once my Con- my uh, prescription lenses show up for my VR headset. I'll play the forest, but I don't want to play it flat screen. I need a VR game. What? You don't want to play it flat? Mm. Who would no, want, I to want to play games flat? flat? If What's a game's flat? got uh, a VR option. I play <laughs> games flat. I'm really susceptible to motion Nerd. sickness, though. So, uh, I mean... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, Trax, what game don't you like? <laughs> Elite what a funny topic this is. Um, actually, you know, uh, Mario thinking, Galaxy. Hold on, I is was thinking that when I thought of this topic, as I'm like, this is a weird one because I'm basically asking you to just be salty about something. <laughs> you yeah, know, we don't have enough yeah. salt these days, so let's 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 salt it up a little bit. It is fun because, like, whoever's listening to this show, like, it's not elite. Right. So yeah, we're yeah. all fine. You know, we're all fine. We're in the same room. Um, no, you know, Data, when you said Mario Galaxy, that's interesting because the whole Mario series, like that's just has been like this example of masterful game design every single time. And mm-hmm. and f- f- all the way back to when I was a tiny, tiny kid and then Super Mario 64 was this ridiculous, re- ridiculous monster that was so amazing and on the ds and mario oh my God. and mario galaxy like i tried and mm. it was like the only one like i was like oh my god like i got all the stars in mario 64 wow and i was like i can't was it the planetoid this. like the planetoid level design i don't know i don't know like i thought when i was playing it I was like, this is it. They've done it again. How do they keep doing it? It's wonderful. And then I just didn't want to play it the next day. And I was like, whoa, what was that? And so that did strike me as like a super interesting example. I I think it was really innovative. And just for some reason, I wonder if I just got too old or something. I don't know. Or something else happened in my life and I, I just couldn't like give it the attention it deserved or something like that. It it's cause it seemed like a really cool design, although I don't know what the deal is with the the second player can like scoop up the stars with the other yeah. wand. That seems really yeah. stupid, but yeah, just tack on multiplayer stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like why? But yeah. um I don't know. I I am su- I, I think I've said this a number of times. I'm super uh like a one game at a time person i very rarely have more than one thing going on and like right now it really is like it's elite and then there are times and it's really only because we're out on this expedition where i like am gonna go jump into half-life alex or i was trying to play star wars squadrons a bit and there's some kind of weird bug going on and it's how are you like liking myself alex? oh alex is amazing i think i'm 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 a few hours in and i think i might stop and do like a, a occasional Twitch series where I just do the whole thing start to finish on like super hard mode or something like that. Cause I think it's amazing and I don't want to spoil it for myself. <laughs> Have you played um, it yet? You haven't? No, no. I'm oh, like, I'm like, okay. I, I'm a, yeah, like I'm a few hours in and I want to stop so that I don't continue spoiling the rest of it. <laughs> and I oh, want to just yeah. like start over wow. and turn up the skill level and just go for it. Yeah. I, I've um, played through it twice now and it's, yeah, it's it, it's, it's it's a masterpiece. Magnificent. Yeah, it is. It's unbelievable. I agree. Yes. And if you um, are interested in fun, um, check out the YouTube channel uh, called "Up Is Not Jump." This uh, this guy is a chemistry. He's a chemist or chemistry professor from uh, England. And well, I don't know. I never know if I should say England or the UK. Whatever. He's anyway. 
Um, he's a very funny guy who now basically just like does YouTube game reviews, but the whole gist of the channel was like, at first it was like VR and complaining about what's wrong with this, this and that particular VR game. Um, but, uh, Half-Life Alex is one that gets a great review and he points out exactly what's what they they're doing right to make it work where every other game has failed at exactly the same thing and given the world the impression that VR is this like problematic thing that will never catch on and it's like well you clearly have you know you've never played a game that's done it correctly um and it, like Half-Life Alex has um but anyway, yeah, I'm I'm very particular. I guess I, I research heavily a game before I decide to play it, and I very rarely start a game that I don't already know I'm gonna really love and and want to finish. So it's tough um, in that regard. I have never played WoW though. I did not think I was gonna enjoy that. And never got in. <laughs> no, you probably won't. Swear, terrible. Swear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. That, Even so if it's a good that. game, it doesn't make it something that I really want to play, right? Because of the nature of what it is. That's the trouble with something like WoW. Yeah, and see, like I, I don't know what what's that the, the FOMO thing? You know, you hear about these amazing <laughs> games, and I feel like I'm like, okay, I got to see what the what the hype is about, and then I go, and then I'm like, well, this is just the same as that other game, just with horses this time. You know, I just, I don't know. <laughs> 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 That's what that game should have been called yep. too. It's <laughs> yeah, with horses hey, this it's, time it's, too. It's that other <laughs> game with horses this time. So yeah, I just I, I don't know. I just could I couldn't get just couldn't get into Red Dead. And then I don't know. And Cyberpunk right now is yeah, it's it's like one of those, but uh with uh uh, uh boobies. Um but yeah. <laughs> More than that, I hear. <laughs> Oh yeah, there, there, there's uh, there's dong waving it j- before you know yeah. in character generation. It's like oh, I get to pick the size. All right, <laughs> oh my pubic care, I get to decide on that. This is awesome. Um, and then five minutes into the game, you got a naked woman in a bathtub. It's it's yeah, it's 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 definitely an interesting game, but it's yet to catch my attention. Uh, we'll see. I'll keep going. It seems to be going somewhere at least. Mm-hmm. But all right, that was supposed to be quick. We dragged that out too. <laughs> oh man, either we're getting really good at podcasting or really, really bad. Yeah, uh, we just like to talk to each other because we love we each other, except for that Dubs guy. Oh. Or, oh. <laughs> it's it's Pepper Jack that I think we all have a huge problem with. Anyway, yeah, what? Um, that Pepper guy. Jack kills more people than all you guys combined. Oh, just hate him. Amulet Pepper Jack gets ass. lucky. <laughs> Pepper, Jack. <laughs> Pepper Jack's a coward who hides in the back and murder shit. Jesus. Don't let, the, don't let your D&D leak into this podcast. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> do you guys want to hit this last discussion topic quickly or what? Go for it. I'm not sure okay. where the discussion will um, go, so let's see. What yeah, so I, I don't think this, <laughs> you know, like everybody keeps saying, this should be quick. Um, it's come up a bunch in the Discord recently, and I thought I would just touch on it because at the beginning of the week, it seemed like I wasn't going to have anything to discuss and then a bunch of news fell out of nowhere. So anyway, Neutron Star Boosting. Uh, I Probably because there are a lot of new commanders who have just joined the game recently uh, and coupled with the fact that the Loose Screws community for the most part is out on an expedition right now, this has become uh, an issue. And I have, well, an issue. This has become a topic of discussion in Discord. And I think we need to just sort of like talk about it more openly and 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 go back through the whole thing. These are this, things like neutron jumping or b- boosting is stuff that we who have played the game for many thousands of hours or whatever have, you know, this doesn't come up for us anymore. <laughs> um, and so when people post in Discord that, you know, oh man, I, I saw a neutron star that looks super scary. It, in my head, like my my the hair on the back of my neck stands up and I'm like, oh my God, like you don't know. <laughs> and then we, yes, good gift, Chig. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> um, and then, uh, uh, so so then I, I jump in or, or 
dubs or somebody comes in, oh, actually, like, this is this is how you do it. It's actually not that bad. Here's a quick video that'll give you a rundown. And then like 20 or 30 minutes later, we get a post from the same person like, oh my God, I just jumped like 280 light years or something. Um, so boost jumping, it's not such a big deal. It's not so scary. Um, who wants to do a rundown or do you all want to just listen to me talk some more? If you're plotting your... A uh, route in the galaxy map, you you check the fastest route button and you click check cone boost. That way, if your route, if your the computer finds any neutron stars along your path, you'll see that big blue line come up on all, along your route. When you that's them. When you jump into a neutron star, just kind of uh, align yourself parallel with the jet cone spewing out from the thing facing away from the star um, and just kind of ease yourself down into it and you'll shake around a good bit and then you'll get the message that your FSD has been supercharged. And now you got a, a... You get a scary message too. <laughs> yeah, Don't warning. forget that. <laughs> yeah, what's that one say? FSD yeah. operating beyond safety limits or something. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, then you have a... a uh, your jump range has been quadrupled for one jump. Yeah, for new players, the biggest thing is is knowing that you're going to lose 1% of your FSD every one of these jumps you do. So if you don't have an AFMU, you might want not want to be doing this on your entire trip because you're not going to get home. Well, it'll just become very tedious because your FSD will start malfunctioning. <laughs> You're not going to blow up. It's just going to not let you jump. Then you'll have to try again. It's not going to let you jump. Then you'll try again. Then, hey, you'll jump. So, you know, it's not end of the world. <laughs> it just it, it becomes more of a nuisance than anything. And that usually starts happening, what, at about 80%. So you can get about 20 neutron jumps before yeah. it, it starts becoming a pain in the butt. Um Second thing is... Hey, mine, mine's at 37 right now, by the way. I just checked because I'm making a point of not repairing it. It's still working fine. I, I get pretty regular FSD failures. I wait about five or eight seconds and then push the button again and it works. Yeah, so, that's no so it's a nuisance more than, than life-threatening for sure. Uh, second is just making sure that it's a neutron, not a, not a white dwarf. If it's a, if it's a neutron star, they're <laughs> they're easy. You just head toward towards about the middle of the jet coming off of it. Ease your way into it as you fly away from it and and go. And if you've done enough neutron, I'm not afraid to go at the neutron star anymore and do FSD boosts on neutrons. Yeah. They're they're nothing. It's the um, white dwarfs, and the the only reason white dwarfs are harder is because the damn exclusion zone is so big that it covers up most of the cone from three quarters that 95% of the cone is, is, is covered. And the fact that the exclusion zone is a whole circle around the cone. If you just make a straight line towards the tip of the jet that you see, you're going to fly into the exclusion zone of the white dwarf. And if you go into the exclusion zone while you're in the cone, you're dead. I mean, you can get out, you you know, but it if takes a lot of luck, a lot of luck, a tiny bit of skill, but it's really luck. But <clears> you're going to die 90% of the time if you start taking that Don't, don't boost. Boosting does not help you align with your trajectory. It actually makes it worse while you're in the, the gravity well if you're trying to escape it. Like yes. if you do get dropped. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not good. And I wouldn't even suggest recommend white dwarves for new players at all for a 50 percent boost in your jump and the amount of danger involved with it just stick to neutrons yeah there's there's one white dwarf around ross 310 that's always trying to route me towards and i'm like nope (laughs) it's not worth it because that's the other thing is the neutrons boost you way 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 further they're Uh, four times yeah which which was a math mistake when they added this stuff to the game way back years ago (laughs) Um, that they just couldn't take back. It could, a thing they couldn't take away from the player base. Um, the other thing that's going to happen with White Dwarfs, they, they don't boost you very far, so they're not worth the vastly increased risk. But that exclusion zone, which is very wide, you also can't really see it. Um, for, you can't for me, get one I, quick blip, usually. Right. 
When you yeah. first jump into the system, you will see the exclusion zone for just a second, and then it'll disappear, and it, it won't be shown again. That's kind of how the game, I guess, is adding danger to the situation. But you get that quick idea. If you didn't see it clearly, or if there's even question about it, like I've seen some white dwarfs where the, the cone barely protrudes at all, some of them are are easy because the cone goes very, very far. Um, but that it's just super not worth it. So, but neutrons, on the other hand, are very easy. And even though it looks scary because it's tossing your ship one way and the other way, um, they're extremely easy to work with. You know, slide into the cone and face away from the the object, the compact stellar object, and you'll be fine. And you can take your FST way down below 40% like I have, and it still works fine uh, almost all the time, you know? So. Yeah. Anything to add on this dubs, right? Uh, sell your exploration data and just send it. Yep. Die a few times. You'll learn real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might even be worth practicing your escape, too. <laughs> uh, if you're in the bubble, if you're in the bubble, go to Jackson's lighthouse. Oh. Yep, and there then, is an available neutron in the bubble. And then once you're at Jackson's lighthouse, go anywhere else in the bubble you want to go in a single jump, or to the complete opposite side of the bubble <laughs> if you have a high <laughs> jump range. Yeah, yeah. What did you get off Jackson's that time? I'm wanting to say it was like 330 something. Yeah, it was. It was it's, a hell of a jump. Yeah, because my jump Conda has like one eighty four point something, and then you multiply that by four, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, that that jump, I had to sit in super cruise or was it normal space? I had to allow my fuel tank to right. utilize, you know, because like I was still exceeding the mass of the jump. So I had to sit there and I was just watching my fuel tank drain down, 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 down. I was like, all right, now's the time. Hit the jump. Arrived in system, immediately ran out of fuel and had to have someone bring me some. <laughs> 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 but it was a, a 300 and... Shit, I got a screenshot somewhere, but I'm not going to waste time digging it up. It was, was it was a big a jump. jump. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right, so anyway, that that's neutrons. They can be super helpful. That is how people cross the galaxy very fast when you want to. And the um, the module um, AFMU can repair your FSD. Um, you bring one of those on your expedition, and and you'll be fine. Um, it is not that scary, uh, and people should get into it because it's loads of fun. Um, you do have to be careful of your fuel. Um, so that's one thing, like if you're a new commander and you're not used to keeping track of your fuel, um, if you get onto, like I was tonight during the podcast, like my route led me to like five neutrons in a row. Um, luckily the sixth star was a scoopable star and that happened a few times. Uh, I made a huge amount of light years very, very quickly. Um, but if you do, you know, if that six star was a neutron, I could have been stranded on the other end. Um, so just keep track of that. And you know, when you push the FSD button, um, with your ship, uh, targeting the next system, it will show you what star class is on the other end. Um, and just make sure it's scoopable or, or something. Cause obviously you can't, you can't filter for only scoopable stars and set it to use jet cone boosts because neutrons aren't scoopable. Yeah, that, um, that's a good tip. Closest I've ever come to running, running out of fuel was just not paying attention, you know, a neutron jumping along yeah. and all of a sudden I look at my fuel. I'm like, oh, crap. And then, you know, luckily I was, there's usually a star close enough that you can still get to. Sure. I mean, especially if if you just did a neutron boost, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're going to, you're going to get somewhere great. So, okay. Um, yeah, I thought I'd throw that in there. Hey, I think um, I think all that's left is some cheesiness, right? Sweet, yeah, we'll do a cheese. But should we start with okay. the cheese joke and then give the cheese of the week? I think so. Which is the most religious cheese? Swiss, Ooh. because it is holy. <laughs> now, cheese of the week. We're gonna go with a Spanish cheese called Manchego. It is a sheep's milk cheese. It is super, super good. Um, I don't know. It's it's 
I kind of got a buttery texture, a little bit creamy, not too strong. I, you'd have to eat some. If you've never had a sheep smoked cheese, that they've got kind of a distinct well, flavor and very, very tasty. So Manchego is the cheese. We'll go one more cheese joke just because now I've got more. And we'll go with what is a cannibal's favorite cheese? Limburger. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Stay cheesy, everybody. Wow. <laughs> oh, magnificent. Um, okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining me on the podcast. Uh, I really did sit down to try to get a quick episode because we had such a late start and utterly failed. But that's why they call me a professional. Uh, so, uh, thanks, uh, Chig, Dubs, Data, and NL Hate for joining me on the Loose Screws podcast. You can still find us at loosescrewsed.com where there is links to all the places we are, including Discord. And there's also a merch store where you can get, uh, sweatshirts and mugs and fun stuff with our logo on it. Um, if you have not come out and joined us on the Distant Screws 2 expedition and you feel like you might want to see some wild, wild stuff way, way out in the black, there's probably still time to catch up and feel free to do that. There are channels for that in the Discord and people who would love to help you out getting started, even if you're a new commander and there are fleet carriers out here for you to land on and everything is perfectly safe. Uh, whatever you're doing back in the bubble or way out in space, I hope you're having fun. And that's all from the Loose Screws Podcast. Fly loose and screwy, please. And um, don't enslave other commanders. <laughs> Bye-bye.